Welcome to Don't Be Caged by Your Age, Louie. I am so happy you're here. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Andy. Thanks for having me. Oh, I'm so thrilled that you could tune in. Let folks know where you're hailing from and how old you are. I am in Atlanta, Georgia, or a little suburb outside of Atlanta called Peachtree Corners, one of 27 varieties of peach tree outside of Atlanta. Uh, and I'm 72. Congratulations. One of the best things, listeners, that I'm enjoying about having this podcast is I never thought in a million years that I would be aging out loud. We were so indoctrinated as women to A, not right. ask a woman her age, but B, to never say our age, especially after the age of 40. And I have to say, it's taken me a while to be like, yeah, I'm 67. And it it sort of dissolves any of the former indoctrination, Louis, that I've had around that. And so that's why I always ask the guests, oh, what, what's your age? Right. And Good for so, you. so, Louis, before we dive into how you're shattering age related expectations, please give us a little glimpse of the roads you've traveled to give us a flavor of where you've been and who you are. You know, it's, a, it's, it's been a long road and, and, and it hasn't stopped. I'm, I'm still working kind of as a fractional uh, sales executive. And actually, this week I rolled out a new, a new service. But um, I, I've been working you know, in the sales or owning my own business since I'm 10. My first job was in a hot dog stand in Skokie, Illinois. And I'm pretty sure I was the first guy to say, you want fries with that? This was, I think the McDonald's had just opened up and, you know, that, that, that upsell. So I've just been doing it a long time. Um, I, it, was, it was natural for me. I went into technology and uh, I wasn't really cut out to be a programmer, developer. I wasn't that smart, uh, but I sure liked technology and I liked sales. So I had a long career. Well, I wouldn't say at the beginning, maybe about, about five years, six years, and then decided I got the entrepreneurial itch. I started my own company. And actually being from New England, you may appreciate this. There was a company at that time, I was working for Digital Equipment Corp. No way. Yeah, yeah. Ken Olsen. Ken Olson, very good, yeah. yeah, 1981 to 85. But here's the funny part, I left there to learn how to uh, run my own business. So I wanted to get into a small company and got hired by EMC, which you probably know as well. And right down the road, 495 from here, very right. similar to where DEC was originated, Digital That's Equipment exactly Corp. right. I interviewed with them, I interviewed with Dick Egan, who, who was the CEO, and interesting is enough, his wife was the receptionist uh, who who let me in to see Dick, and and we 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 hit it off great. Anyways, oh my gosh, uh, that's such a great story because many folks don't understand those origination stories where they were just like we see the pictures of Bezos at some metal desk with the sign Amazon over when he first started. There's always a beginning, but I oh. love that. You know, at the age of 10, you had the classic entrepreneurial right. vibe and gene pool going on for you. You were there selling hot dogs. And so you knew that that was going to happen for you someday, but you still had to find the courage to jump off the ship and, and create your own business. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and, and I did it for 22 years. I ran the business for, for 22 years and, you know, through four kids and ups, downs. Um, after about 20 years, I got depression, got diagnosed with depression and job burnout, which I had dealt with. And it was just, just I have so many experiences over those 22 years that, um, you know, now what I focus on uh, is sharing them. Yeah. You know, I'm trying to help people a few decades behind me. And uh, with any wisdom, I could help them shortcut their journey um, I really enjoy doing. Yeah. And I love that listeners. Louis had a successful business for 22 years. He founded a training company that earned a spot on the Inc 500 list as, as one of the fastest growing companies in America. But here's what I know from my prior podcast, Startup Life Live Show, which was that burnout is for real and it's hard to pace yourself as a founder. Yeah because you get caught up in that hamster wheel and you get caught up in your identity. And as we said on episode 11 with Judith Koenig, 
a woman who is a executive transition coach. She works with the high performers like you, helping them transition because so, so often people are like, who would I be if I were not this? Yeah. And life threw you into that, Louie. Life said, well, you know what? You're not going to feel good because you're no longer in alignment with your heart. You're not in alignment with your true calling anymore. It's time for you to change. And depression showed up. Yeah. Had yeah, you experienced it before? No, no. Um, although, you know, I, I think part of it is a little genetic. As, as mm -hmm. I When I got it, I looked back at my father and uh, mm -hmm. his father. And so I think there's a component to that. But, you know, I, I had just been pushing hard yeah. for at that point for like 20 years. And um, it just took its toll. You know, it, it, it did. And, and I, you know, I had to make some big changes. Yeah. You know, and, and, get healthy. and how did you reinvent yourself for that? Because you had to transition. You had mm -hmm. to disassociate yourself from being a founder of a well-known, fast-paced, doing all the things business to Louis. And you had to transition to, well, who do you be now? What do you do now? What was that process like? That was, uh, it was not easy. Uh, I'll tell you, it was not easy because for, you know, a couple of decades, I had been telling people what to do. And now that, you know, it looked like they were going to be telling me what to do because I, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do next. I just needed to, to land somewhere, you know, yeah. get healthy, get my feet on the ground, put, my, put everything back in order. And so I went out looking, and this relates to, you know, your, the topic of your, your, uh, of your show, I mean, ageism. So at that point I was in my fifties or mid fifties or something like that. And um, I went out and interviewed for a few jobs. And, you know, and a couple of them I heard, well, we have a different kind of culture here, which to me I learned was a, a code word for, yeah, you know, you're too old. We like young energetic people, we can work to death. And so, um, but I, I, I landed in one and, you know, it, it's like everything else in, in life. When the door closes, just keep walking because another you'll see another open one and just go, go right through. That's um, right. I, I landed at a company that was another startup. I helped them build a whole sales team. I wrote a sales training course while I was there. Um, we built the revenues multiple million dollars from nothing bootstrapped. And so it re-energized me. And, yeah. And, you know, put me back on track. I've got, I have to fan myself again as a global mentor for eight years. Sales was always the challenge for every founder. You were the dream that came true and kept on giving. Oh yeah, I'll get that sales training manual. I'll get everybody ready and I'll bump revenue up so many times. And oh my gosh, that's wonderful. Yeah. And the interesting part of this transition and listeners, you may recall in episode seven, when we were talking to Charlotte, there is a period of where you may be feeling sad or confused or depressed or all the things as you transition out of decades of, and especially what we were indoctrinated to do hustle grind. We bought into the whole capitalist dream of toxic productivity and right. so it takes time to transition out of that and do the tough work that Louis just talked about, which is going inside and figuring out who do you want to be, what's going to drive you, what's going to light you up, what's going to fuel your passion, as well as your pocketbook. And with Charlotte, she came out of that phase and became a model. Louis, at the age of 65, she just got signed by a top wow. modeling agency. Wow. Wow. So, you know, and she'd always wanted to model. So that's another don't be caged by your story. <laughs> After a while of working for a few companies in my transition, I, I got the bug again. I had to do my own thing, but I didn't want the whole company thing behind me. I just wanted oh. me. I just wanted to do my thing. So for the last four or five years, I've been a solopreneur and, you know, I set my own schedule. Um, I take the jobs I want where I can help. And it's just, been, it's just been great. You're, so, yeah, you're, you're working to live. Okay. So working sort of melds into your life and you've got plenty of time to uh, also do your thing, right? A absolutely. Um, and, and if not now, when, right. um, but yeah, but back to your question, um, ageism is there. Sexism is there. You, you know, I, I try to tune 
a lot of it out. I try to support the women that I'm connected with right. uh, on LinkedIn and, and just be positive and, right. and move forward and see how you can help. You know, listeners, I found Louie on LinkedIn, as one does, when they're out <laughs> looking at the different uh, interesting posts that are going by. And I loved your post, Louie, about how it took you 72 years to become an overnight success. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and one of the quotes Louie has, which I just love, which is trying new things is fuel for growth. Nobody gets to their deathbed and says, I'm sorry for trying so many things, but there are plenty of people who get there with regrets for the things they did not try. True. Talk a little bit about that, that aha moment that you were willing to share on LinkedIn and share some of the successes you've had. Um, well, I think I came up uh, with that quote. This is a not only a, a funny story, it, it is amazing. It'll just take a second for me to tell it. Yeah, on my yeah. 72nd birthday, I knew I wanted to write something. Maybe a list of things that I've learned over the years, hopefully help someone else uh, on, on their journey. So I, I wrote 32 things. I put them on LinkedIn. They did okay. Uh, made, made a video about it. Did, did pretty good. But I like the site Reddit, the social media site Reddit. And I like all the different subreddits and you can kind of get specialized and whatnot. I thought, you know, I think I'll put this out there. Where would I put it? So I put it in the inspirational subreddit and it got pretty good traction on my birthday. So then I went back to check on it and the algorithm said, you know, you might want to uh, put this over on the life hacks subreddit. Seems like it's right up the alley. So I put it out there. Next day I come back, I look at it. It had 110,000 upvotes, 98,000 shares, and 11 million views. Oh my gosh, I'm getting the clappers out for that. That must have blown your mind overnight. Over in 24 hours. Oh and now it's at like 12 million views and 98,000. But it's like, I mean, in the comments, 95% anyways, there's always a couple of haters, but 95% yeah. of the comments were so nice. And I asked people for some ideas and things they've learned. And I had, I, had, I think, 5,200 uh, contributions. And so, you know, I thought to myself, why is that? I mean, wh what happened? I mean, right now, in both of those subreddits, it's the all-time most upvoted post in history, or of all time, for those subreddits. Oh, my gosh, Yeah, Louis. I know. That was an aha moment. Yeah, and, that's and at why, 72, you're relevant, you're visible, it's, you know, you're engaged, you're connected, you've got community, all happening in a significant way. Yeah, you're never too old. And it yeah. ain't over till you say it's over. That's really one of my favorite things. You guys, and but with that quote that you read, you've got to keep trying new things. And I thought, well, read it, why not? I like it. Let's see if they like this. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. And so I am so happy for you for that experience, because for anyone, you, when you're online, it always feels like it's crickets. You know, yeah. a few people have yeah. seen things. I mean, it's a win if you get 100 likes for crying out loud. And to have that huge response. And not only that, how delicious are the Reddit folks to suggest you moved the article over yeah. and, and to get rewarded. And oh, I'm just so happy for you. And of course, okay. I'm going to you have the link to that because curious oh, sure. minds. Yeah, share yeah. that link because I want to get that into the Absolutely. show notes for the listeners so they can go, really? I got to go see that for myself. Absolutely, I will. Okay, awesome. And so had you imagined as you were still in the throes of your business for years, right? Um, because again, the indoctrination that we're working to shatter and change and shift internally for those of us who are trying to fight the ageism that goes on in our heads, had you imagined this is what your Renaissance period would be like? That's what I'm calling the ages 55 to 80 now. That wow. Did you imagine that? What were you thinking it was going to be like? I had no idea. Quite frankly, I was just working to get four kids through college. I couldn't see I, I literally couldn't see that far in advance. I was really mm. just more living, you know, raising, you know, how it is. You're in the middle of raising a family and and just trying to make an income, pay the mortgage, do all those things. And so, no, I didn't, I, I'm sorry to say I didn't have quite the vision, but what I did have was determination. Yeah. 
and resilience to just keep going forward. Every day is new day, new opportunities. And if you stay at it long enough, you know, sometimes things click. So I, I had no idea what I was walking into. I just kept walking. Yeah. And, and that's key everyone is the ability to say, okay, I don't really know quite where I'm walking, but I know I was intention oh. of, you know, being fulfilled, finding purpose and wanting a certain connection and experience. And trust me, if you keep pulling on those threads, life will hand it to you. So Absolutely. another beautiful quote that you shared in the bio that you provided to be on the podcast was these wonderful words. Today I work not because I must, I work because it's my mojo. My father taught me a long time ago, if you let your mind go, your body will follow it quickly. Wow. Yeah, true, right? What does that mean to you though? Because you know, we keep saying, oh, try new things. But what is it like to keep yourself engaged? And what have you picked up as far as, I mean, you hopped on Reddit and, and you're active on LinkedIn, but what's some fun new technology you never thought you'd be doing? um making videos um i really i you know i have the, a couple of youtube channels i started a new youtube channel called agewise which is just about all these things kind of that i've learned but um just in the last uh couple of years i really got into youtube and making videos and um i sit here and create them i have a uh, a weekly uh sunday start a newsletter on linkedin that comes with a video each sunday and so um, I, I never thought that I'd be doing that much with video, but 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 I love it. You know, I mean, and walk us through it because it's one thing to say you do video. Okay, it's another thing to say I set up the tripod, I use my phone, I use this software. Take us through what that looks like in editing and what it takes to produce sure. these wonderful shorts. And I'll have the link for HYS folks because Louis just gets on there and he shares one delicious YouTube short after another. Yeah. Um, it's not that complicated. I'm no genius, I'm telling you. It's all done with my cell phone and uh, this little lavalier mic, $35 that I have on my shirt, and, and that's it. Um, I think I pay $20 or $21 a year for a little teleprompter app that goes on uh, on my phone. So I record it, it, it creates the, the captions uh, of what I'm saying, it generates them, I download it, uh, I have another free piece of software. Uh, I think I paid maintenance 20 bucks a year or something called mini tool maker, bring it in there, cut off anything, you know, edit it really quickly. And that's it. That's um, it. if I want to, I can bring it up to another piece of software I have called in video, which is really pretty good. So if I want to have B rolls, which are, mm -hmm. you know, how do you watch a video on and other scenes come in right. and fades and this and that. If I want to get fancy, which I usually do for the Sunday starter one, I'll put it in there and you know add some things. Uh, but it's not that hard. Even if you don't want to do any of that, plenty of people they they overthink it. They don't. Right. Think, you know, I'm right. not good on camera, or I've got to have all this editing stuff. No, you don't. No, you don't. Folks really just want to hear your sound bites. Basically, they right. love looking in your eyes. They love hearing what you have to say because there's an audience for you out there. And Absolutely. I know you can feel self-conscious, everyone around video, um, but try it. You can always put on a filter if you're worried about anything about how you look, but you can create valuable content at any age and stage using the technology that's out there. And I've always said to people, I had to wait for technology to catch up to me to do all the things that I wanted to do. Because yeah. if I wanted to be in front of a quote TV camera and going live across the world, which I did and do on YouTube, LinkedIn, all the Facebook, et cetera, back in the eighties, no, that was never going to happen. Or nineties, I'd have to get picked up by a TV station. Oh my gosh, never going to happen. Yeah. Or podcasting, which is so easy. So there's lots of new things you can learn. And what other, share some more of the successes that you were talking about uh, when you wrote that wonderful post for Reddit, as well as where I found it on LinkedIn, some other inspirational points you'd like to share from, as you look back and say, wow, over the last 72 years, I became an overnight success. Right. Well, you know, the, um, I, I think when I, when I jumped out on my own, um, I said, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I need, I need a break. I'm just going to start posting on LinkedIn. 
things that I've learned, sales things, which is, you know, my major, you know, if you will, and uh, the things I know about in sales management. And I put them out there every day. I put a post out every day, crickets, nothing for five months, right? One in one week, I had three inquiries and accepted two of the contracts. And I had more work than I really wanted. And so you sometimes you think you're you're preaching into the void. You know, no one's paying mm -hmm. attention. But interestingly enough, the people who contacted me had never commented on any of my posts. We call them lurkers. They're just out there lurking. And you don't realize that they're looking or listening. And um, uh, and those were the people who came forward. So regardless of what you do uh, in social media, or you're putting yourself out there, people are watching. People are looking. They may not be ready to engage at that point. But over time, as a matter of fact, one guy called me up and he says, you know, you don't have to tell me anything. He says, I feel like I know you. I've watched you enough. I know you. I know you know what you're talking about. I trust you. Let's talk about doing business. So that, that, was, a, that was a real eye opener for me. That's wonderful. I have so many thoughts around this. First of all, I run into people here in Boston and same thing right after the pandemic, they said, I know I haven't seen you, Andy, in like almost two years, but I feel like I see you every day <laughs> because yeah, okay. that's the beauty of videos, everyone. And it videos also, or audios build what the search engines call EEAT. That's your expertise, experience, authority, and trustworthiness. So you do, you have a lot of lurkers, including those search engines who are watching you and they see, okay, the consistency in this area. And it's just so ideal for when you're switching industries. So perhaps you were in one industry most of your life and now you're going into a new industry. Start a podcast, start doing some videos. It really helps you transition into your new industry and get the stickiness of the EEAT, but also what I love what you said, Louis, is the trustworthiness. Folks are watching and you know, they go, I really like the cut of that guy's jib. <laughs> it's an old sailing term. Um, yep. What advice do you have for newbie founders and entrepreneurs? Because we're seeing the numbers right now, Louis, showing that a lot of folks are like, well, ageism, I'm not getting hired. I'm just going to go start my own thing. And right. What advice do you have for them as a seasoned founder? Uh, I, I, would, I would say uh, make connections with peers um, because you need a lot of support because it's really lonely. You know, I mean, it's true. It's lonely at the top, especially if you start out on your own. So join groups, even if they're virtual, the LinkedIn groups are a great place to exchange ideas, bounce ideas, get new ideas. But it's a good place to, uh, you know, getting connections, building your network, people who can relate to what you're doing, and you'll find that you're not alone. And just right. understanding and knowing that um, will help, you know, it'll help keep help keep you moving forward uh, with it. Yeah, and there's a lot of there's a lot of groups out there that support startup founders, everyone. Oh, so, yeah. so, and it doesn't matter; they do not care age, money, no. nothing. You have it one is. thing in common, right? Which you, is? You, you have a commonality of, of, of starting and being a solopreneur or being an entrepreneur. And so you, you can share those. Yeah. Um, but, and, and learn from other people. I mean, I have probably made every business mistake possible, Andy. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I have. And the, the key is hopefully I've learned from it. And so, you know, sometimes you don't want to listen to uh, people my age, but smart people do because you don't want to go through the problems again. So, you know, be open, be open to new ideas, which actually made me think about uh, AI. Um, these days, you know, uh, I learned a long time ago with technology because I've been in technology since this side of punch cards. Right? That's right. You have. You know, my feeling is, get on board or get run over. And that's what's happening with AI. Yeah, you may feel threatened, but figure out how to master it and, and use it to your advantage. Get on board because it's not going away. Oh no, and listeners, I'm gonna give you a little assignment. Go into ChatGBT right there in your browser 
And let's say you have to write a letter or you have to have an uncomfortable conversation, whatever it is, or something just personal, give it the prompts. I, you know, I need to respond to a certain situation. Here's who I am. Here's what I'm looking for. Oh my gosh. And then for an email that you need to send professionally, tell chat GPT the prompts. I, in my case, I'm a podcaster. I'm doing this or doing that. And then ask it if it could help you with what to say for your circumstance. Go practice that. It is so much fun because it's so much easier to edit, right, right. Louis? Right. Oh, absolutely. You want, you want to get the you want to get the the results. Chat GPT will even help you to write the prompts. Right. You, know, you could say, pretend you're a prompt engineer and make my prompt better. And they'll spit that back at you. Yeah. So then you submit the prompt. But where I see the real advantage is I still write all my own things, but it, it gives you ideas. Right. And you can just take the concepts and then run with it in your voice. And that's the real beauty of it, I think, and the real power. It is. So listeners, I want you to let us know if you tried it, because I think you'll fall in love with it like I have. And yes, there's always going to be concerns about AI taking over the world and there'll be no jobs. Trust me, Louie and I are both from the startup ecosystem. There will be more new, exciting right. businesses, just like we had coming into the 2000s. I mean, Google was a baby. Amazon was a baby. Facebook hadn't even been invented yet. YouTube, none of that was there. We've seen all these companies mature. Apple was still struggling in yeah. 2000. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, there are new companies around the corner that will solve that problem and address our needs in different ways. So I'm very excited about that. Um, and let's talk a little bit about intergenerational because I know we see some, uh, I wanna say stigmas out there, some ideas among our boomer generation, our Gen X generation, again, because we were indoctrinated for the constant 24 seven hustle. We have a whole new couple generations who are like, yeah, no, I'm not into living to work. I'm into working so I can live and have a good time. And I'm okay, nine to five, that works for me. What are your thoughts about working with folks or if you do get hired or when you do get hired and you're working for someone that's uh, 20 years or 30 years younger than you? Well, that happens. <laughs> that happens quite a bit. Um, going back to Reddit, the majority of the comments I got were from people in their 30s, maybe 40s, a fair amount in the 20s too, who said, this is a good roadmap for me. This is something, this is something that I aspire to. I'd get a few comments from people in their sixties and seventies. I think you got a couple even older than and I, but the majority were down there in their thirties, it seemed like. And so I think everybody wants the same thing. They want autonomy. Yeah. They want to be happy. You know, they want to live comfortably. They want to enjoy. It's just different ways of going about it. And you kind of have to do what feels comfortable for you. I don't think I don't think everybody is cut out to be an entrepreneur or wants no. to be an entrepreneur. That's right. It's, it's like sales. I, you know, I, I talk about sales and I train salespeople, but not everybody's meant to be in sales. I always think, you know, that's why they have chocolate ice cream and vanilla ice cream. That's right. You know, <laughs> you know we're all different. So, you know, even before I accept engagement, that's what I was saying earlier. I want to make sure I can help. I want right. to make sure I can add value. And one of the ways I could do that is if you're, willing to listen, willing to be coached. If you're not, if you just want to do it your way and tell me how to do my way better, it's probably not a good fit. Find mm -hmm. someone who can help you do that. So fit is important. And the reciprocity is there. I'm sure you work with young founders oh, yeah. who are probably like, oh, thank God Louie's here because I have no idea how to do this. And you're sharing their wisdom. And I think what we have also as boomers and Gen Xers is the ability to communicate because we didn't have text. We didn't have, we right. had to meet in person or pick up the phone. So right. there's a lot of skills out there. Plus we get to learn from our younger generations, right? Absolutely. A absolutely. And that gets back to the, you know, the whole sort of theme of this conversation, which is keep learning, keep growing and get over any issues you have about doing that. <laughs> well, and, and you know, uh, I, someone asked me recently, he says, um, when, are you, when are you gonna give it up? I, and I thought about it and I said, I'll give it up when I'm no longer useful. If I'm not yeah. useful to anybody else, then I'll probably 
pack it in and just you know play guitar all day or you know, <laughs> meditate or all day or that's something the, that's the best advice for not being caged by your age louis oh i'm so happy that you joined me and shared your deliciousness with the listeners you are such a fun person i meant to ask you when we were talking about your videos are you also repurposing your videos over on TikTok? No, I, ha I have not. I don't even have a TikTok account. Um, I, I just wanted to see how they would do on YouTube oh, first. They will uh, love you on TikTok. First of all, our generation is rocking it on TikTok because it's sound, you know, quick information, whether it's how Chinese woodworkers are carving a piece in a certain way or farmers from a different part of the world. I mean, there's so much great information on there. And I know folks would love to see you and hear from you. I'll tell you one last story that was okay. really fun that, that you should keep yourself open to anything. I got a message one day from a woman on LinkedIn. All these things come in from LinkedIn. So if you're not active, it's a great place for, and you're in business, it's a great place to be. Anyways, she reached out to me and she says, I see you do part-time sales management. We're looking, our CEO is looking for a part-time sales manager and you know, blah, blah, blah. Would you come and talk to us? So I went to their office and it was in a peculiar location of Atlanta where there's usually just restaurants. And I thought, what, what's going on here? Well, I went there and um, it actually was a converted restaurant into a business, um, but it was a, a Chinese American company. And 98% of the people who worked in that, 100 people were Chinese. And a lot of them didn't even speak English. And the whole sales staff was Chinese. They sold uh, systems to Chinese restaurants. And they said, they said, well, tell us what we can do. And we, we talked about it, had a meeting or so. And they go, okay, come and do that for us. And I, and I said, all right, let me, let me just think about it. And on my way home, I thought, this isn't going to work. I mean, things that didn't translate in terms of sales strategies and techniques. And it's just so different. Their culture is just so different. And I stopped the car, pulled over, and I thought, I, I think I'm going to go back and tell them, it's, this is, isn't a good fit. Then I thought to myself, you know, every Sunday in my Sunday starter in the newsletter, I always preach, put yourself out there, learn something new, try new things you never know. So I kept going, went home, told them, okay, let's give it a shot. I stayed for 18 months. I was ended up being the vice president of sales. I was in charge of a team in China and I had the best experience ever. They were great people. I loved every part about it. We put in processes in place and they did better. We did sales training. I had an interpreter for a lot of it, um, but it was great. But if I had gone back and said, nah, I don't think it's a great fit, I never would have had that experience. And this was just a couple of years ago. And so, I love how you took your own advice. Yeah, yeah, yeah me too. <laughs> you didn't want to be a hypocrite. So yeah, you just- even Stay you open. I love that something fierce because we often close doors because we say, no, I'm too right. old for that. Or no, that's not going to work. Or we come, it's so easy for our brains to go to all the limitations and constraints, but you allowed the magic to happen. And you knew that you would know in a few months if it was not sure. going to, but sure. you were willing to try. Yeah. And oh, I love that. Louis, yeah, how can great. folks stay in touch with you and connect with you on LinkedIn and YouTube? Let us know all the places we can find you and, and add you to our network. Sure. Uh, probably the best place, if you're in business, you you know, you have a business focus, LinkedIn is the best place to reach me. I put everything I have out there, uh, particularly every Sunday, I put out a newsletter, a LinkedIn newsletter called the Sunday Starter. We Maybe we could put the link there, but I'm in so many different places. Uh, the easiest thing to do is just go to Google and type in Louis Bernstein Stales, and it'll give Bingo. you all the different places. I'm at and just pick, you know, what, what works for you. Well, I'm very excited to share you with the startup ecosystem, which I'm no longer part of, but I still have many connections and wow, the startup ecosystem in Atlanta tech wise is yeah. huge. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. there's nothing better than a fractional sales. What is, what is it that you do? Fractional? Fractional sales executive. Yeah. There we go. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm part-time, part-time. That means you come in for a few hours, show everybody what they need to do, get everybody trained up and boom. And yeah. then you become the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah, that's right. Hopefully that's, <laughs> that's how it works, but usually does.
It usually does. These folks just don't know. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Thank you, Lori, for carving out time to come on the podcast and share your background, but also who you are today at 72. You are clearly thriving in what you're doing. You figured out, you went through the tough times and the transition, and now you're living an extraordinary life at 72. Who knew, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, I'm so happy. I mean, I'm, I'm grateful, you know, I, I'm real. I really am. I'm, this is just where I am right now. Uh, both my wife and me and everything. It's great. It it's is awesome. great. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And it's a privilege listeners. We don't take that for granted at all. You know, it's a privilege to be at our age and stage and yeah. still be alive and to pursue passions and add value everywhere we glow with whatever's going on with our aging bodies. I mean, that's still something that we have to remember in the long run. Oh my gosh, folks, be sure to follow Louie everywhere. He glows you know he's got some gems for you. Even if it's just watching him on his YouTube shorts, you'll be inspired to find ways to thrive after 65. And remember, if you're sitting there going, yeah, Andy, sure, uh-huh. Now, do not let those internalized ageist beliefs prevent you from pursuing new dreams, even to tap into, well, what could be a new dream? What could be a new opportunity? Don't let those ageist beliefs and thoughts stop you, no matter what age you're at. Until next time, I'm wishing you a delicious day everywhere you glow. Cheers from Boston. Bye, Andy. Thank you. Thank you. Listeners, I'm so grateful you carved out time to tune in and grab the gems from this delicious conversation. Be sure to hop on over to Don't Be Caged By Your Age on LinkedIn or Instagram to share your thoughts about ageism and unretirement. Because in this space, your age doesn't define you, it refines you. If you are inspired by a story you hear, it would mean the world to me if you would subscribe, share, rate, and review the podcast. To receive an alert whenever a new show is posted, please join the Don't Be Caged By Your Age newsletter. Every month, you'll receive links to the podcast and helpful resources for creating possibilities for your unretirement days. Thank you for tuning in. I am so excited to hear how you found ways to thrive after 65. Waving from Boston. Cheers. Cheers.